Hello everyone, and welcome to the Brick Formula Instruction video on LEGO Set 8041, the race truck. And in this video, I'll show you how to modify this set using power functions so that you can play with this remote controlled truck that you see here. Okay, that's the final product. Now before I begin, I just want to point out that this video was intended for people who are new to this and they want to get into this hobby because I am new myself. And if you're a professional and you're good at this, then this video may not be for you, but you're welcome to watch. Just leave me some constructive feedback down below in the comments, okay? Because you'll find that some of my techniques are a little basic. And I only used the parts that came in this set. I didn't add any additional parts. Okay, so granted, there will be some things that are not perfect, all right? So I just want to point that out, and I'll mention them later on in the video. Okay, so for now, let's just show you how to build it first. And here we go. Okay, for starters, just build the set like normal, going through each step and each page until you get to page 14 and stop at step 26. Okay, so just do this, but don't do this side, okay? Instead, we're going to do this. First, you need to get these parts, alright, and what you do here, you just take this L shape, okay, and you just stick that in there. Okay, there we go. Now you have a closer look. You can do the same with this side, and there we have it, okay? And then over here, you can take these two rods and put it through these holes over here. Don't get any wrong ideas. Okay, and there we go. Since you stopped that step 26, okay, on page 14, you should have this assembly in front of you. And you'll take this piece right here and put that over here. Okay, and there we go. See how that fits nicely? And you take this part and line it up over here and squeeze these rods in. Okay, and there we go. Okay, there's a closer look. And then from here, you're going to skip to step 28 on page 20. You're going to do step 28 and keep going until I tell you to stop. Now on page 24, I want you to stop on step 12. Okay, you're going to do step 12, but don't do step 13 on page 25. You're going to skip this. And instead, you're going to get these seven parts right here. Okay, you have a 3M and a 4M stick. And what you do is you take this piece and put it through this hole here. And you put this one on the other side. Okay, and then next, you're going to take this one that has five holes in there, and you put it on the bottom. And this gear is next. And over here, we have a piece with seven holes in here. Okay, and you put that on the bottom. All right, and just put that aside for a second. Since so you stopped at step 12, you should have this assembly in your hands. Okay, you're going to take this gear, and you're just going to put that in the middle here. And then you're going to put this through this hole over here, and then insert into the gear. Okay, and there we go. If it just behave. All right, and there we have it. Okay, and then next, if you look on page 26, they'll tell you to take that assembly and lock it in. And that's what we'll do. Okay, so you're just gonna line this up over here, like so. Okay, it should be just right, it won't fall out. And just lock it in. There we go. And there we have it. Okay, there's a closer look. It's a little bit wobbly over here, but it's okay. We're going to take care of that right now by putting in the XL motor, okay? Actually, before we do that, we have to put this gear in the middle. All right, you're going to need a 4M stick. You have this piece right here, and just put it roughly like that, okay? And then, you're going to put the gear in the middle here between these two wobbly sticks, okay? So this we can get a better look, all right? And then, you're going to put this stick through the center, and there we go. If it could be just be so kind as to go in. Okay, and there we go. Alright. And then now, you will need these two pieces. And you're going to put it through these two holes right here. And that should hold everything in place. Okay, you also need this here because that's what helps hold the XL motor in place. Okay, and just put it through these two holes right here. Okay, anyway. There it is. Alright. See how that works? There's a closer look. And here it is from this side. Okay, now we put the XL motor. Now, to get set up to put the motor in, you'll need the XL motor, which looks like this. Okay, and you'll need these four parts right here. We have the 9M stick, and you're going to put this piece on there. About that much in is fine. Next, you take the motor and have the word LEGO facing you, the wire on top, and on this side here, you can put this piece through the top hole, and that's as far in as it goes. Okay, notice how that's in there, okay? And then you take the assembly over here 
and you want to get this blue piece into this hole right here and this one will go through the top like so okay and there we go and that will hold the motor in place all right next you're going to take this little gear I'm going to put it on top of the beige color one right there okay you can take this rod and just insert it through everything and then it's going to go into that see where that orange part is right there you're going to put that into the motor okay and there we go and once that's really in there you can use this and lock it in okay and there we go now you can continue to page 26 27 28 and keep going until I tell you to stop when you get to page 44 you need to stop okay do not do step 45 and don't do step 46 either okay you're gonna skip that and when you get to page 47 you will do step 48 all right once you do this you're done with the first book okay and now we can move on to the second one now in book two once you get to page four you're gonna do step 50 and then you're just gonna pause over here okay your assembly should look like this so far okay and then next you're gonna have these six parts over here and what you're gonna do now is build these little T sections okay like so alright you gotta make another one alright this is what's gonna help hold the M motor and you're gonna look on the back side of the cab here okay here's a closer look and you stick these right above this piece right here okay so you have that and this will go on the other side okay and then continuing on you will need to pick out these nine parts right here okay and you're gonna take this one which is seven holes and you put these on the sides here and then you take the blue one and you put it next to it like so okay and then next you have these with three holes and you're gonna put them in like that okay I'm gonna do it to the other side and that'll just go in alright and then we have another one and this time we'll put it this way alright here is another one and then we're gonna put that aside for now next you take the M motor okay and then these four parts this is a 4M okay and this will go right in the middle okay and then these three will go on top right above it see that's how that works and then to the sides okay and there we go now to put this assembly all together now before we put it all together you need to take one of these parts which has five holes and you need to put it on this section over here okay this way it's all connected all right like that and there we go okay and then you're gonna push this back down and that's what you have Let's take a closer look and there we go see and now you're gonna take this assembly I'm gonna put it right behind the seat but in the front of this part okay and that'll just go down pretty nice there we go and that's how that looks okay and then next you're gonna take your motor and make sure this side is facing the front and that this this axle piece will go down into that gray piece right there okay and just put in like so and that should fit in just nicely there we go okay now I'll take a closer look see how that all works and there it is see how it's into the pipe right there okay and now we can move forward and just keep going now you want to continue back on page 5 in the second book and just keep going until I say stop when you get to page 29 okay you're going to skip this whole section because we used up all the parts here okay and you want to skip that because we're not going to use the fifth wheel all right this build uses pretty much almost all the parts that are in the set so something's got to give okay and that's why we're not doing that and we're going to skip up to page 31 and then you can continue again on page 32 okay now when you get to page 36 on step 7 this is where things get a little bit interesting because it depends on what kind of battery box you're using now if you're using the rechargeable one then when you get to step 7 don't add this tube that you see here just add the other piece that you see over here okay and then you'll end up with this piece right here 
if you're going to use the AA battery box, then just ignore whatever I'm saying and just keep going, okay? Just add the tube, whatever. Okay, but since you're using the rechargeable battery, just go on to the next step where they tell you to add this thing here. Okay, without the tube, of course. And you're going to add that right here. There we go. And then when on the bottom here, they'll tell you to add this piece to the first part right here. What I want you to do is to put in the second one instead, because this way your battery box will fit in here. We're going to use this to lock it in place, which I'll show you coming soon, okay? And now, let's just keep going, and then stop when I tell you to. Now, if you got this far, that means you finished with the book, and now it's time to explain how all the power functions work together. Okay, let's take a look at the receiver first. And if you look on the back side, it is the blue and the red. Okay, and what that does is it coincides with the remote here, where there's a blue and a red as well. Okay, that means whatever you hook up to the blue side, you'll be controlling it with the blue side over here. Okay, and we'll take the XL motor wire, and we'll hook that up to the blue side over here. It really doesn't matter where you put it, there's no wrong way, it's just a matter of preference. Okay, that means I'll be controlling the truck moving forward and backward with the blue side, and the steering will be done with the red. Okay, and that means I'll be taking the wire from the M motor, which controls the steering, and I'll be hooking up to the red side over here, like that, okay? It's that easy, and then this wire from the receiver, you're gonna use that and hook it up to your battery box, okay? In this case, the rechargeable. You can hook it up to the AA battery box if you want, it doesn't matter. And just to test it, okay, you can just turn on the battery box, you get the green light, you take the remote, and you wanna make sure the switches here are on the same frequency, okay? Make sure this one says one, and this one says one. Well, it doesn't matter, as long as they're the same number, okay? And there we go. All right, not bad, and there's the steering. Now, when it comes to placing these power functions, you actually have a lot of freedom, okay? Just get two black pegs and put it in there, and you can hook this up wherever you like. You can put it on the roof or on the side here, which is what I'm gonna do. As long as this part is exposed, you're okay, because that's how the remote signals the receiver, okay? And I'll just put that over here, and then the wire from the receiver, you can hook it up to either battery box, like so. Okay, and this is the rechargeable, and I'll put that on the side here and lock it down with this part over here. Okay, the reason why I have it so loose like that is because in case I run out of power and I want to recharge it, yeah, I have easy access, okay? And it's also easy to turn it on and off, okay? Now, if you have the AA battery box, which is over here, you can hook this up behind the cab right, right there, and you just need these two black pegs over here, okay, and just hook it up to the side, okay, which is not hard. There we go. And here's the other one. Just want to stick it through this hole over here. Okay. And there we go. And there we have it. It's a little bit loose, but it's but it's fine though, okay? And you just hook up the receiver like that. And there we go. You're done. Alright, and here we are with the finished product. Now to talk about the drawbacks. As some of you might know, I'm not exactly an engineering genius. All I did was I went out there, I bought this Technic set and the power functions that I put together, and this is what I ended up with. Okay, I had no help, all right? And obviously, there will be some imperfections. So I'll talk about the first one, which is the steering. Now, the steering works just fine. The only problem with it is that it does not return to center very well, okay? Which can be pretty annoying when you're driving it. So when you turn it, don't be surprised that it's not driving straight in the direction that you want it to. Okay, you'll end up driving in zigzags, which is pretty annoying. But you can probably fix that with some extra parts, like rubber bands, or whatever. Okay, that's where all the fun begins. All I'm doing is just to help you get started. Okay, and with some extra parts, you can probably add some different gears over here. Because as you can see, the gears there are pretty small, which means that this truck can only go so fast. Okay, you might find it a little bit slow, but then again, it depends on what you think is fast. Next, the one thing that bothers me the most is the infrared technology itself. Okay, now, when you play with this indoors, you have a maximum range of 30 feet which is pretty amazing. So I got all excited and I went to play with it outside only to find that the range was about 10 feet. And the reason why is because there's a lot of interference from the sunlight. So that's it, 10 feet. Okay, so that was pretty frustrating and miserable. A little swearing went on. And then I brought it back inside to play with, okay? But still, this is a pretty fun hobby to get into. Very educational. And hopefully, through this tutorial, you can build amazing things from here on, okay? because this is pretty, pretty cool. All right, and that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this show, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.